This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. You're gonna acknowledge me. What's going on, everybody? Guys and girls, welcome back to another edition of the SmackDown Review right here on the WWE Podcast. As always, I'm one of the hosts of the show, Michael Ritter. You can find me on Twitter at Michael5Ritter. And also one of the hosts of the Football Function Podcast, available on the Patreon app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. As always, joining me per usual on this episode to break down SmackDown and get ready for WrestleMania, my humble co-host, John Carrasco, a.k.a. Juicy John. You can find him on Twitter at Big Speaker, B-I-G-G underscore Speaker John. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, man. I am not going to lie. Kind of worn down from the week, oh, I guess man. you could say. I mean, of course, y'all know the situation and everything like that. And But, yeah, I'm glad it's Friday. Glad it's about to be WrestleMania, I guess you could say, and ready to break down this SmackDown. Yeah, you better get some, you better get some energy quick because you got to mm-hmm. – A full plate of wrestling is uh, one way to look at it, and we're just now getting started here with possibly the appetizer, if you want to look at it like that, which is SmackDown, because, I mean, you know, we got the Hall of Fame after this, which is not a big class, but I will say, massive Stacey Keebler fan, Mm. massive Rey Mysterio fan. Oh, yeah. So I am looking forward to seeing them get inducted, and, you know, I mean, it's pretty crazy that Stacey Keebler is actually represented up here, and Rey Mysterio isn't. (laughs) Like, that's wild. I wouldn't have guessed oh, that that would have been the case last year, like when I was looking at Ray, because I've looked around a lot yeah. for Ray Mysterio figures. But like I said, man, it's hard to find the one in the right attire that I want, you know, because there's new ones where he's got like the long sleeves on. I don't want that. I want old school SmackDown, Ruthless Aggression era Ray okay. Mysterio if I can. But. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for tuning in here. Hopefully you are tuning in here. I know that WrestleMania is going to start tonight whenever you're listening to this because it's probably going to be Saturday. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you can squeeze this episode in and part of your preparation for WrestleMania. And one thing I will say is I think that Matt dropping his preview and prediction show already like that was available to listen to on Friday, as well as both of the mailbag episodes, Casual Wrestling Crew and um, Matt having his version of it. So all that was at your disposal much before, or way before Saturday, I should say. So we might be the only episode that these wrestling fiends are going to be able to, you know, scratch their itch with, is, you know, go. the SmackDown review. So hopefully they uh, take full advantage of that. But, uh, yeah, the way that this one started off, I mean, is probably the most exciting storyline going into it. I mean, I you, you could argue that there isn't really a storyline that is better than this. Even the Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns, as you know, that match as a matchup is up there with any of the other ones. But in terms of the pure storyline, like, there's really not another one. I mean, you could argue Rey Mysterio and Dominic because of the stakes and what it means and how invested we've been in so long or for so long. So you could argue that that one means a lot. But the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn versus the Usos, I mean, people are literally, they have pitchforks and their flame torches, whatever, going to get this match as the main event for night one. I don't really care. I mean, you know how I feel about it. I think that the the uh the royal rumble winner should get it you know like you gotcha. can't be moving goalposts like well the the storyline isn't good enough for charlotte and Rhea, so i think that we should get the other one no okay no that's not how it works but i would understand i guess if they were to for the sake of this storyline if it were a main event then i would definitely be behind it but uh the usos pretty much come out first in in this whole thing they're they their music is what opens the show essentially no video package we get a welcome from Michael Cole, but that's pretty much it. No promos, anything. We get the Usos music. They come out and basically just uh, try to get us a little bit excited for the match, but they don't have a whole lot of time before they're interrupted by Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, who come out. Kevin Owens basically starts going at them first, talking about how whenever he first came to WWE, they were very welcoming, them being the Usos, to him and his family whenever his son was traveling with them on the road. 
just basically saying how the Usos were really good people that Kevin Owens could look up to, and that all went out the window whenever they pretty much started just doing Roman Reigns' dirty work for him, whenever they became lackeys, for lack of a better word. And um, right there, the Usos, Jimmy, I believe, is the one who shuts him up. He tells him, no, whatever, you guys are pretty much questioning the bloodline's loyalty. And then they point out what usually happens, right? Kevin Owens, or they lose the big match. Kevin mm -hmm. Owens turns his back on Sami Zayn, yada, yada, yada. They're extremely confident that they're going to win, as they should be. I mean, I don't expect anything else, but they're very confident that they're going to be the ones who walk out of WrestleMania with those tag team championships. Sami Zayn eventually gets, uh, gets his turn on the mic. He goes from there questioning their loyalty or what really matters to them because it's really not about loyalty to them it's really strictly only about blood because they chose blood over loyalty time and time again throughout the past two years with roman reigns because roman reigns has never been loyal to them and he singles out jay by saying especially you and i mean pretty much this specific program this specific matchup no love lost no love found you could just feel it when they come out this is probably going to be one of the most stiff matches if that makes sense like the, like the the shots are going to be landed pretty hard and you know, obviously the triple threat with gunther drew and sheamus that one definitely is going to have a have an argument in that category but i don't know man i think that this one is going to deliver there's a, there's a reason why they want it to be a main event and uh, even if it's not it's going to be main event quality and i'm definitely looking forward to it but what do you think about the way that the show opened up well, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, of course, the energy, you know, brought it right away and everything like that. So definitely was entertaining, I guess you could say. But the way Jimmy kind of slipped up, you know, I felt, oh like my they, gosh. I felt like they were winning. You know, of course, I mean, I think they ultimately they got the dub on that interaction right there. But the way that he was going, man, just kind of slipped up. You know, what, what do you say? Shumps? Chumps, yeah, yeah, it was pretty funny though. It's almost like he was trying to ch trying to say chumps and sucker yeah, at the same that's time. That's what I thought too. That's what I thought. But um, at, and also at the end, whenever uh, Jay was talking and he said the what was it blood bloodline mania? Yeah, dude, I felt like that little line right there was like just punchline right there. Kelt it, and ultimately told him what to expect. Yeah, if they win, they could definitely market that. That oh yeah, sure. If both. Obviously, matches end up going in their favor. We'll see what happens immediately after this segment ended or <clears throat> after their interaction ended before Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn could even work, you know, get their way up the ramp. The Street Profits music hits. Mm -hmm. Montez Ford specifically is the one who has a match here, but Angela Dawkins comes out to aid him, cheer him on, whatever. I mean, everybody has somebody in their corner because this is a Fatal 4 match with Chad Gable, Montez Ford, um... Shoot, who was the other one? Ricochet. Ricochet and Eric from the yep. Viking Raiders. So everybody has someone in their corner here to uh, to back them up. Obviously, Otis out there rep representing the uh, Alpha Academy and Maximum Male Models. Is he doing double duty? I don't know, man. Because he's Otis on Monday Night Raw, yeah. from what I from what I, I've seen. I saw the little makeover or whatever he did on Twitter. So yeah, that was pretty funny. But nonetheless, this match is taking place right now as we're watching the, t the television screen. Looks like it's going to a commercial break. Everybody's on the outside of the ring, and we get Braun Strowman and Ricochet. Unless the match ended somehow, or is there some, is there some going on? Hold on, i got to unmute this to see. Somehow, Ricochet won. I mean, I don't I know what we missed. I saw, I saw the shooting star press. Yeah. That's what I saw, too. But we're not going to edit this out. We're not going to, you know, change it. We somehow missed what happened. If you're watching SmackDown, you likely know. But we do have to pause it right now because we got some bloodline action backstage. Roman Reigns and the Usos. We'll let you know what happens right after this. Okay, so apparently the Roman Reigns segment with the bloodline is still to come a little bit later. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I, I messaged the Discord and I asked what happened just to kind of get some clarification on that previous match, the Fatal Four Way. Uh, number one, the reason why it was a Fatal Four Way with those specific wrestlers was because that is a participant from each of the team that's in the Fatal Four Way tomorrow night on the actual WrestleMania card. And DJ Kuzmo, Grim Reefer, they all said that Ricochet basically hit a 450 splash pinfall on Chad Gable. They won. 
So we get a couple video packages, specifically Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley, just getting us ready for that. I expect we're probably not going to hear from either of them tonight then. I think so. If we just got that video package. I don't know. We might. It's still a lot of time left, still in the first hour. But I was going to say, I hope so, at least from one of them. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, But up next here on the show is the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. I do believe that – because it used to be called the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I do believe that they they dropped the memorial part because every single one is extremely forgettable. Like, this is not one of the, you know, top-tier matches that I'm, you know, getting out of my seat for, just getting extremely excited. I mean, number one, you've seen it. They all came out together, like, at the exact same time, except for mm-hmm. Bobby Lashley, which, oh, way to tip your hand. I wonder who's the favorite to win this bad boy. Right. Bobby Lashley <laughs> comes out after everybody by themselves. They walk out side by side, a group of, like, 25 dudes that are about to beat the hell out of each other. They're currently beating the hell out of each other. It's just such a weird... Uh, it's just such a weird dynamic, the way that they start this. But nonetheless... We get it underway. Baron Corbin eliminated in a mere, what, five seconds of it actually starting. And then the same thing happens with Flop Dalla and Ashanti. Mm-hmm. They both get eliminated uh, pretty quickly by Bobby Lashley. Now Rick Boogs on a little bit of a pretty dominant run here. I will say he got injured a year ago at WrestleMania. I remember seeing it happen live in person. Pretty devastated because he was on a pretty big run with Shinsuke Nakamura at the time. And, yeah, that was kind of just, you know, the rug pulled out from underneath him. Here he is back. It would be a little bit poetic for him to win. I mean, we're this match isn't over yet, so we don't have any spoilers or anything like that. But it would be pretty pretty nice to see Rick Boogs take it. But I have no idea, obviously. Like I just mentioned, Bobby Lashley is the clear favorite in this match. L.A. Knight, another one. Braun Strowman, he has a chance. Anybody that you maybe are leaning towards as we sit here right now? Uh, I was kind of still... And holding on to last year, Madcap, you know, he was the one that lasted or won it. So, I mean. So, Madcap won it last year? Yeah. Hopefully, okay. he at least lasts to the end, you know. But that, that's who I was kind of looking forward to. But then again, uh, Braun Strowman, you know, he got his music too. So, maybe that's a little possibility right there. But other than that. I'm just glad I'm making it through this SmackDown. <laughs> no wings that I ate previously. Well, I can't remember if it was the wings that I ate immediately. I can't remember honestly if if it were if it was wings that I had eaten that day or the night before. It had to have been earlier that day. Mm-hmm. I think you were sure. Caleb, that do you was... remember if it was earlier that day the wings that I ate? It was. Okay, just making sure. My roommate Caleb's in here joining us, watching this SmackDown, getting ready for WrestleMania as well. You guys all know I mentioned him several times on the show, but nonetheless, it feels good to not be uh you know throwing my guts up because mm-hmm. that was a I have not thrown up since. Yeah, Probably didn't throw up about a year yeah. before that. Like it's crazy. I don't throw up very often, and that was one that came out of nowhere and was like the Exorcist. So <laughs> definitely want to you know stay off that. But nonetheless, back to the actual show. We're currently on a commercial break right now, but I guess we'll uh, get back whenever this match has a winner and the Andre the Giant Battle Royal has been won by somebody. So we'll be right back. And to the surprise of absolutely nobody, Bobby Lashley is the last man standing. He does win the 2023 Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Bronson Reed, though, I will say, he impressed, to say the least. Going into it, I knew that he was a few people's pick. Um, I I didn't really understand why. He's been extremely cold in terms of, like, crowd reaction. There's videos Mm -hmm. of the crowd being just basically completely bored out of their mind when Bronson Reed comes out. He's not really the um, most entertaining character, not the greatest in the ring. He's not bad by any means, but I've just never really been like a massive Bronson Reed fan. But he may have won me over tonight just with his performance in this Battle Royal. I do feel like he earned it in terms of like a, a legit opportunity to win. But Bobby Lashley ends up outlasting him and throws him over the top rope. What do you think about Lashley winning? Well, I mean, i kind of confused, you know, just given the fact that he's going with or against – uh, Brock Lesnar, so what's his involvement in this, or why does he even need to be, like, pushed over, I guess you could say, at this point? I mean, like you said, Bronson, you know, he could have definitely, what, what would you say, earned that, I guess yeah. you could say, rather than Bible Lashley just being, being given it, I guess you could say, For in a sure. way. But I don't know, man. I felt like Johnny Gargano. When it, I, I don't know what move he did, or I On thought Butch. it was a counter. Yeah. I thought I thought that was a counter from Butch's move turned into some type of DDT, but that, that that was pretty nice move to me. That was impressive. But other than that, I can't really say that I'm too happy for 
Bible Ash, I guess you could say. Round of applause. It was just obvious. I mean, it was just a, a pretty clear winner. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a few matches. It's almost too obvious with some of them that you're like, man, like I don't want to just make this a cookie cutter prediction, but it does seem mm-hmm. like some of these matches just have a pretty obvious winner. But you know, yeah. I mean, you, you figure like somebody from the lower part of the roster, you know, would get this award right here. I think you know. I totally agree. I thought that somebody like Bronson Reed, who nobody really, when I say nobody, I mean me, mm-hmm. really thought that he had a legit shot to win going into it and ended up really impressing and damn near winning it, to say the least. But uh, yeah, shout Bobby Lashley. I guess we'll see right now. They're doing us a little Cody Rhodes video package, getting us prepared, getting reminding us what all he's gone through you know just mm-hmm. as if we have forgotten they've pretty much shown us about 50 times every single month <laughs> pretty much the story and you know, right now they're highlighting the royal rumble and coming in at 30 and eliminating gunther i believe is the one who lasted at the very end right because mm-hmm. yeah oh my gosh man just a little bit of a side note gunther he like they interviewed him this past week and he said they're like well where, where do you see yourself next year this time and he should have said main eventing I'll be main eventing WrestleMania mm-hmm. next year. And I'm just calling it right now in March, because we're still in March, March 31st. I'm calling it in March. Gunther's winning the Royal Rumble next year. Even if he's the IC champion, which I don't expect him to. I think he, he'll probably drop it by then. But I do believe that he is going to win the Royal Rumble in 2024 and go on and main event and go against someone. I'm not sure who is going to have the championship by then. Maybe Cody Rhodes. I don't really know exactly. I mean, Gunther versus Cody. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around it when my mind is fully entrenched with the Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns angle right now. But either way, just a little bit of a side note here. Just watching this video package, seeing Gunther, I was reminded of that interview that he did. And I'm just pretty, pretty confident he's going to be the Royal Rumble winner next year. Well, I mean, I see that. I think Triple H is ready to move him into a bigger role, I guess you could say. I mean, he he's a force. I mean, especially with Imperium being the whole little group, you know. that That's, yeah, that's some needle movers, let me say that Speaking right Speaking of needle movers, let's just see. I had to unmute this really quickly. Go ahead, go ahead. Just to see what Cody Rhodes is got going on because remember he's having the face off it's Rhodes lead to reigns tonight him and roman reigns having their last face off mm-hmm. before wrestlemania so we got that in store for later on tonight we'll let the show continue to play out see what's next we'll be right back not too long of a match there with the fatal four-way women's edition raquel rodriguez does secure the win with a tahana bomb on sonia deville no surprise there you know how high i am on raquel I think that she should have a much more important match at WrestleMania, but her time will come. It's not quite there just yet. Uh, Ooh, a little double down commercial. I know you know how good that bad boy is, Mm -hmm. but nonetheless, I'm excited for uh, what is to come here on the show. Do you have any idea what's next? Not sure if they put a little commercial or a little advertisement before they went to the actual commercial break as to what's coming up next or anything like that. No, I don't think they're, or a spoiler or anything like that showing up, but... I don't know, man. That uh, whole little match right there, I felt like it was just what, what for type stuff in a way. But to remind you, hey, we have a tag team women's division, and there's a match on WrestleMania. I don't know, man. I, it's kind of throwing me off. But the only thing that was a uh, thumbs down for me, I guess you could say, was Liv Morgan. I don't know if you've seen her makeup, like she had like white, silver, or whatever. I don't even know. Kind of looked like a Ronda Rousey type makeup thing. Uh uh-uh. uh. Wasn't good right there. Chelsea Green, gosh. But, yeah. yeah, this was a quick one for me. A little lunch boy, I guess you could say. Yeah, nothing too special. Um, this match, without a doubt, in terms of, like, the WrestleMania matches, the actual Fatal 4-Way tag team match, I could not care less. Mm-hmm. You already know, Chili Dog's over here tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to probably stand up and go get it's seconds so. during that match or, you know, specifically yeah. eat during that one strategically. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's see. Ooh, I will say while well, it's on my mind here. Did you hear that they are no longer doing the red Hell in a Cell? They're going back to the traditional look? Yeah. Yeah. Starting with Edge and Finn Balor? Mm Mm-hmm. That's going to be a good way to start it off. I know. As soon as I saw that news, I said, hallelujah. Right. (laughs) I was very happy because, you know, I've just never been a fan of that red Hell in a Cell. From the second it it happened, I was like, this is weird. I hope this is a one-off thing. And it was not. But 
luckily it's a, a thing of the past. And hopefully the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view is a thing of the past as well. And we could just appreciate the Hell in a Cell whenever it's actually called upon, whenever it's actually, you know, worthy of being the very end of a, a pretty meaningful program, you know, not mm-hmm. just, oh, it's October. We need to have a Hell in a Cell match. So whoever's feuding, you get to be inside the cell. I just don't feel like that's uh, the right way to do it. We are back from commercial break. Let's see what's up next before I go further on this little tangent here. Ooh, a little backstage ac- action. Hopefully we finally get to hear from the Bloodline. We'll let you know what happens right after this. Okay, so no Bloodline yet. However, we did get that little commercial, that little WrestleMania teaser for the Goodfellas, I believe it was. Mm-hmm. With the bloodline, that was pretty funny, right? It was. I definitely enjoyed that. And then we get Rey Mysterio backstage, dressed pretty damn nice, you know, getting ready to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Well deserved induction, but you know, to say the least. Uh, but he is approached by Legado del Fantasma, all four members, including Zelina Vega, and he gives them a gift. They, they basically tell him, "Hey, we got your back tomorrow night, or whenever the actual match is." If Judgment Day happens to get involved, he thanks them and then gives them each a gift. The gift being a shirt, LWO, like NWO themed for Latino World Order, except it's colored in green, white, and red. Very nice shirt. Surprised you don't look into that. To be honest, that's a, that's a nice shirt there. You know, it fit ethnicity wise. It just you know you're checking that box. So I mean, you know. I would like to wear it, you know, but it wouldn't right, really right. fit, you know, for me. So that's why I would just, if I were you, because I got a Rey Mysterio shirt, like I told you, the one Kevin Owens was wearing, I got that one in my cart. Like, I want that one very badly. And then a uh, WCW Thunder shirt. I also have that okay. one. Nice vintage. That's a nice shirt. I can't, I can't wait to get that one. But anyways, do you have anything to add about the Legado del Fantasma coming out or the... Uh, I guess anything else before we get into the tag team match? Well, I guess I could say that I feel like Rey Mysterio is being, or it's good to see that he's being embraced, you know, by, I guess you could say more of Santos, you know. I guess you could say kind of being that son that he d- doesn't have at the moment type stuff, just kind of fill place for Dominic. But other than that, man, I'm definitely ready for that match to happen. Definitely need Dom to get his tail whooped i guess you could say brutally but other than that yeah ready for that one me too me too but like we said we get a tag team match here drew mcintyre and sheamus according to michael cole versus ludwig and kaiser (laughs) no not really it is Uh, ludwig and giovanni i'm I'm not gonna lie i'm kind of upset that they introduced or they came out during or did they come out yet Ooh, no, they haven't. We need to hear Samantha Irvin. Never mind. She must have already she must have already announced. Or that's on me. Had it muted, nonetheless. But her There we go. Dang, she's going hard tonight. But hey, her yeah, WrestleMania introductions, I bet, are going to be I mean, clearly everybody wants to put their best foot forward at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. None of, like it's no different for the announce team or the you know announcers or whatever. She's going to probably be announcing her ass off. Oh, yeah. Roman Reigns, are you kidding me? His his introduction is going to be amazing. Gunther, the one they're showing on the ring right now. I might need to get that Intercontinental Championship belt. Just saying. It's starting to grow on me a little bit. Okay. The same thing with the United States. I really wasn't a big fan of it at first whenever they first introduced it. But starting to grow on me, I will say. But I can't get that United States before I get the original United States that I really want. But... Imperium versus Drew and Sheamus. They're already off. I don't even believe the bell has rung yet. If it has, didn't take these guys very long to uh, to get going here. But anyways, we'll let these guys duke it out. We'll let you know who won and why. And that tag team match ends with the much expected winner being Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. However, the way that it ended was pretty pretty impressive. I will say just a bro kick to Vinci. And then, of course, here comes Kaiser before he has a chance to break up the pinfall. He gets a Claymore. And a nice ugh, from Drew McIntyre, which, you know, always puts a nice little cherry on top when you get a Claymore. And uh, they secure the win, get a nice little face-off. We see Gunther backstage looking very concerned. And um, he, I think he knows that he has his hands full tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, he has yeah. two dudes who are gunning for him, and they really have a legitimate shot, both of them, 
at walking out with that championship. Although I do expect Gunther to retain, just going on record saying that. But coming up next, we get the final face-off between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. The much-anticipated final face-off between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. But before that, what would you think about the Sheamus, Drew McIntyre winning this tag team match? Well, I mean, I kind of thought, you know, they were going to build that momentum. They needed this, I guess you could say. But I thought it would be like more of a physical match, you know. This one I felt like it was kind of like highlighting the differences that they have, you know, at the moment. But then them still coming together to get the win in a way, I guess you could say. But I don't know, man. Just the... Just the relationship that they got going, of course, it's always comical, you know, like how Sheamus was coming out and then Drew, like, automatically, I guess you could say, interrupted him, coming out with the little high steps and everything like that. That was pretty funny to me. So I think that they're doing the best that they can do, I guess, to keep us entertained in that type of way and also, you know, being involved with this oh, Gunther, yeah. you know. For so, sure. yeah, I definitely think. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, at this point, I was going for Drew, but I really don't know who's going to be the champion after this match. I, um, I'm pretty pretty solid here on the Gunther side that I think he's going to. Uh, no, really I, quick, what's up? Go ahead. Oh, my bad. I, I just think it's it's about that time. You know, he kind of elevates off of that yeah. belt, you know, like just how we were talking about earlier and move him into – the role that he needs to be, I guess you could say. Yeah. Maybe just a long road, but eventually he'll get there. What do you think between Cena and Theory, the first match of the show? Mm. Who wins that? I don't know, man. I want to see John Cena win it just because the way Austin Theory kind of just presents himself now as, what would you say, the future, I guess you could say. Yeah. But he's still the, the last – what was it? Promo that they had between each other. I think John really stuck it to him. But other than that, yeah. All right. No doubt. No doubt. Well, without any further interruptions. Here you go. It is time. We'll be right back after this face off to let you know what was said. Okay. That segment has come and gone. Went a little bit quicker than I would have thought. Literally, Roman Reigns' entrance was 90% of the entire segment. It's okay. I mean, tomorrow or Sunday night actually is going to be way worse. But it is what it is. It's a great song. I'm here for it. But as far as what was said, Cody Rhodes, he, I mean, did his typical you-know-what. He's not just Dusty's son. He's not just whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's tough to go word for word for what Cody Rhodes just said. I mean, it was literally like 10 minutes ago. But nonetheless, he's pretty much preparing us letting us know that he is going to be the next Undisputed Universal Champion. A lot of people don't agree with him. Roman Reigns comes out. Instead of doing his typical blank city acknowledge me, he simply says Los Angeles. He begins to say it, and then he tells Paul Heyman, I don't care about any of them. It's not their turn. It's your turn, looking at Cody Rhodes. And says, Cody Rhodes, acknowledge me, drops the mic, holds up the championship. I mean, for this being the go-home show for WrestleMania, I mean – it was a ballsy move for them to go that route, to not give us a little bit more, I thought. But here we are. We're at the end of the road. What are your thoughts on, uh, I mean, we're not going to see any more WWE main roster stuff until WrestleMania starts. So this is it. Are you pleased? Are you satisfied? What did you think about this final face-off between Roman and Cody? Well, for this to be the little hanger that they left us with, I am not pleased. Okay. I felt like they should have gave us a little bit more, and especially more from Roman, Roman I guess yeah. you could say. I felt like, like you said, the entrance, at least a good six minutes, I think it took before he even started speaking. And that was kind of a pooper, I guess you could say. But Imagine the people in attendance. Yeah, for sure. And then for him to actually just go and say how he did, you know, like he don't even care about the people. I'm like, gosh, now I'll freaking watch this to – Watch you and you want to say stuff like that kind of turns me away in a way, you know, but... You know who does care about what you think? Don't even freaking try it. The one who is going to dethrone Roman Reigns. 
the one who is going to end this streak. Look, I've heard it from everybody. You're I've heard it from Matt. Sunday, huh? I've heard it from Mr. Casual. <laughs> I've heard it from Kanye. I've heard it from DJ Kuzmo. I've heard it from Howard Poole most recently on my podcast. I've heard it from everybody that Roman Reigns, because it's a thousand days. A thousand days is coming up. They're all their WWE is won't stop talking about this thousand days. Time out. Is WWE talking about thousand days or are the fans talking about thousand days? Fans. Just wanted to clarify that really quickly. But nonetheless, it could happen. We're like what, fifty days away from it? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely possible, but I don't know. I just I feel I mean, when Roman Reigns comes out and you see just the sheer confidence right. that he's oozing, he is legitimately on God mode. Like he, it's hard to pick against him. It really is. It's hard to confidently say, like, yeah, he's going to lose this match. But if anybody can do it, if there's any story that is right, I feel like it's Cody Rhodes. And I know I'm in the minority there. It is what it is. But I'll go ahead and ask you. Just really quickly, because like we already said, I mean, people are the, the reason why I didn't want us to do a full on predictions here is because I mean, number one, it's two full cards, essentially two full cards, one massive card on two nights. But people are predictioned out, right? People have been making their predictions for weeks, especially this week. Everybody's heard their predictions. If you listen to the mailbag, I mean, you heard everybody's prediction, right? Like, so I don't really think anybody's trying to hear that right now, but they do want to know this match. It's no secret who I am picking to win. Mm -hmm. Who are you picking to win? I'm still riding on the Roman side. So okay. definitely going to give it up to him for sure. Seems like a real stand-up guy. Definitely cares about his fans. So I understand. No, I'm just kidding, obviously. It's, it's a great it, pick. It's getting to a point. You know, Cody Rhodes it, is the Vegas favorite. Did you I see understand. that? I understand. Because like whenever you're listening to the crowd, you know, you, you're getting that Cody over the Roman. I feel like a lot more than... Roman over Cody. Especially the, whoa. Yeah, that's just a bummer. Hey, come on. No, I'm just you know <laughs> that's the best part of the song. And the song is definitely, I would say, probably in terms of active wrestlers right now. The best part of the song is something, something Cody Rhodes. Yeah. That's a, that. that's a banger. It's bars right there, man. But <laughs> nonetheless, definitely a, you know, a little bit of a left you wanting more type of that's for sure uh sorry if you knew what we were watching here you would see why i was distracted but either way yeah that was a triple look it left you wanting more and we're gonna get more you just gotta hold your horses a little bit and uh prepare because yeah we're about to have some fun here at well, wrestlemania so weekend good what 12 hours i mean 10 maybe what's talking about till or 22 my bad i was about to say geez what are you in london my time bad. or something my man bad. Yeah, John is a little bit uh, out there, so to speak. <laughs> He's ready for WrestleMania to be here already, and I'm right there with him. But I guess we're going to go ahead and wrap this bad boy up because the Hall of Fame is going on right now, and Buyaka 619, Rey Mysterio, is getting inducted. Sir, so we got to show out. him some respect. Got to show Stacy Keebler some respect because, hey, there is not many WWE employees who impacted my childhood more than Stacy Keebler. <laughs> Just if we're going pound for pound, doesn't matter the impact or however, I will say it. Um, yeah, Stacy Keebler, elite, deserves to go in the Hall of Fame. I don't care what anybody says. I know there's some women wrestlers out there who probably deserve to get in before her. I'm not saying that she is some, you know, first ballot or just living legend or anything like that. But hey, you know, it is what it is. Stacy Keebler. Definitely a needle mover, to say the least. But, um, yeah, you got anything to say? Any shout-outs, anything like that? Before we, we send the listeners into WrestleMania weekend properly. Well, I mean, <clears throat> on the Stacey Keebler thing, the only thing that comes to my mind is the Braun Panties match. I've seen her in. But other than that, man, yeah, definitely want to just go ahead and wrap up the show, I guess you could say. Definitely give a shout-out to the Discord members, uh, Patreon. And also give you a shout out, football function and everything like that, man. But yeah, definitely want to wrap it up like that. Oh yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Definitely go listen to football function if you want to. Double J, obviously a, a listener here on the WW podcast. He's doing his thing, XFL review, college football function, everything else. It's just a, a nice, 
a nice time to get into some uh, some football action if you're an off-season junkie like I am. But with all that being said, guys, enjoy the Hall of Fame induction. Enjoy NXT Stand and Deliver both nights of WrestleMania. We won't talk to you until the week is over, so you'll get Raw after Mania. But you got some good stuff coming, so enjoy it. This is truly the best weekend to be a wrestling fan in the entire calendar year. Um, shout out to everybody that's there at WrestleMania. I hope you guys enjoy it. Definitely soak it in. Get as many pictures as you can. Trust me, it's even as many as you get, it won't be enough. As somebody who's who's done it, you you really do. I mean, I know that there's some people who make this like a yearly thing, but as far as like I go, I know that WrestleMania is like a once in a lifetime thing. Like I'm not going next year in Philly. I have no idea where it's going after that. I have no plans on going to a WrestleMania anytime soon. So if you are there, you never know when it's going to be your last. So definitely enjoy it, man, for sure. And, you know, hopefully whatever wrestler you want to win, wins. That's truly what I hope for you guys. But with all that being said, have a damn good weekend. Walk passionately in the direction of your dreams. And we will talk to you soon. Go Cody Rhodes. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com and for all of these shows ad free head over to patreon.com slash wwe podcast until then we'll see you next time